Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a few minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Matthew Patterson and I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center. I'm going to lead you through this skill exercise today. So what's the lesson for today? Today we're talking about excavating quadrats to sample freshwater mussels. So why do we care about freshwater mussels? Well, as it turns out, freshwater mussels are one of the most rare groups of organisms in the world. Only about 20% of their populations in North America are currently considered stable. So because of that, it's really important to keep track of their populations, to know how they're doing, to determine if they should be listed or not listed, or to determine if their populations are stable. Now, how do we sample freshwater mussels? There's a whole variety of ways to sample freshwater mussels. These include qualitative sampling, semi-quantitative sampling, and quantitative sampling. Today, we're gonna to focus on the quantitative method, or excavating quadrats. Excavating quadrats has some pros. This includes getting an estimate of the density of the mussel population, in other words, mussels per square meter. It also provides an unbiased estimate based on the experience of the collector. So you may have someone that's really experienced and someone that's inexperienced. With quadrats, you get a similar estimate from those two people. And of course, there are some cons to the quadrat excavation method. It's very time consuming, for one. You're focusing on a very small area. And you're spending a fair amount of time sampling that area. It's also relatively expensive for the same reasons. It takes quite a few people to complete it, and you're sampling a very small area. Finally, it's possible that you won't detect rare species. Again, if there's a species that's there, but it's not there in very high numbers, because you're focusing on such a small area, there's a chance that you might miss it. So let's go ahead and watch this video. It's going to walk us through the process of excavating a quadrat. But one thing I wanted to mention before we get started is that it's really important to select the location where you put your quadrat in a random fashion. We're not going to cover study design here, but I just want you to keep in mind that it's important to have a study design when you're doing the quadrat method. All we're going to cover here is how to dig the quadrat and collect your data. Once you've laid down your quadrat, the first step is to put on a mask and snorkel and look for any mussels that you might find on the surface. Second, if you're planning to characterize the substrate, you should complete a pebble count prior to excavating the quadrat and disturbing the substrate. The biologist here is placing her finger down on the substrate and characterizing the particle she touches as either sand or gravel or cobble, etc. This method is repeated on all four corners and the center of the quadrat for a total of five measurements. Finally, she removes any large rocks prior to excavating the quadrat. Then you can start digging. All material that is removed from the quadrat should be placed into the sieve. Now notice the gentleman in the orange shirt that's holding the sieve downstream of the quadrat. He's holding it at about a 45 degree angle to capture any substrate and muscles that are dislodged. Now, a common question that comes up when digging quadrats is, how deep should I dig? Well, this is going to depend on the substrate type of the stream in which you're working. But we recommend digging down to the hard pan. Now, that's the layer of substrate that is really too firm for muscles to burrow in. At a minimum, you should be digging down about six inches. Now, when all the 
material has been removed from the quadrat and placed in the sieve, shake the sieve at the water surface to remove all the fines. Then you can sort through the sieve material looking for adult and juvenile freshwater mussels. But keep in mind the juvenile mussels can be very small and may be attached to rocks with the bissel thread, so inspect the rocks closely. Another technique for finding small juveniles is to forcefully push the sieve down into the water. The heavy particles will quickly sink to the bottom of the sieve, while the light juvenile mussels will sink more slowly. The final step in the process is to put all the sieve materials back into the quadrat and record all the mussels that you collected. Want to learn more about this skill or other skills related to freshwater mussels? I would recommend signing up for one of the freshwater mussel courses at the National Conservation Training Center. We have freshwater mussel propagation for restoration, freshwater mussel identification, and conservation biology of freshwater mussels. And if you stick around after this video, I'll walk you through how to find those courses on our website. So thanks for joining us. If you have any questions about this skill, or any other skill related to freshwater mussels or any course at the National Conservation Training Center, you can reach me at the email and phone number below. Thank you. So your best bet for finding our courses is to go to a search engine and type in National Conservation Training Center, hit enter. It's usually the first item that pops up. Click on the link. And then in the search bar, type in freshwater mussels. And then look for one of the PDFs. This, this PDF here is for freshwater mussel identification. And you can see when you click on it, it gives a description of the course, course objectives, target audience, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, it provides information on upcoming courses. Thanks again for joining us for conservation skills in 10 minutes or less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or check out one of the many other skill-based videos in this series. Have a wonderful day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.